there is there is one final speaker uh, and she is joining us all the way from all the way from Australia and we we really appreciate you being up so early Kate uh, <laughs> Kate really doesn't need any any introduction. She's a superstar and a super force. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the only thing I can say about Kate is I'm going to let her speak in just a second. But she is a tour de force uh, for not only her generation, but beyond her generation. She's still doing some stuff today that's really absolutely fantastic. So we really appreciate you joining us all the way from Australia. And good morning to you there. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Hello. Yeah, it was uh, a great, it's been a great day. And, and uh, we're glad to have you as the final leg. So uh, go ahead and take it away. Well, it was wonderful just to um, be able to be present in with our last speaker there. She was sort of similar to me in many ways, um, very family based and inspired and has her muses as her as her grandmother, grand and grandparents and mother. I am 40 years strong in a career in music in Australia. So I'll just quickly recap for those of you who don't know who I am. I am uh, a singer, a songwriter, an artist. Uh, I'm a mother. I'm also a great champion for many philanthropic causes um, and communities. And um, uh, I, I raise lots of money, especially in my country for many different, not related to the arts necessarily, but we've had, um, many critical conditions in my country of late with floods and fires and, and drought. I mean, Australia seems to be burdened with many, many things all at the same time, including COVID, but that's running ahead of myself. First of all, I'd just like to, again, take you right back to the beginning. I am a singer firstly, and I started singing when I was 14 years old. And I don't know what it was exactly about music that made it seemed uh, like a logical lifestyle, a career. But even at that age, I knew for certain that I'd be doing it for the rest of my life. And it isn't always the case with young people that they know what they want to do. But it seemed to me the most obvious thing for me to do because it was the only thing I felt that I could do well. And sometimes that little default system where you actually just look at simply, what can I do? What is there that I can actually do um, that doesn't require so much effort that it's something, it seems to be something I love to do and, um, and it's easy to do. So I was very, very blessed. Uh, I started singing and I started working really young and I developed a work ethic, which has proven such a great thing for the 40 plus years that I've been in the industry. Because when you are working in an area that you love, of course, work doesn't feel like work in a traditional sense. It's not labor. It's not something that exhausts you or takes from you, but instead you gain with it and you gained for it so much more, so much more about yourself, so much more about how much you can be of use to society. And shortly after um, I started singing in a jazz, small little jazz trio, I went off and I went into bands, which in a sense, the rest is history, but not quite because if you've lived in the arts or you've lived in any industry for more than four decades, the thing that you have to realise is that every decade you're going to change and with it you have to transform elements of your industry to make you relevant and make you contemporary and keep you in the game. And so I've seen myself go from a child ingenue and then I travelled through and into my 20s and, you know, became sort of, the pop star and then in my 30s as I became a mother and my music became more as about the singer songwriter I started to win awards which were very respectful in a sense because they were like you know hall of fame for singer songwriter um, not just being like a wind-up toy on a stage but for actually for creating the industry around myself learning how to play my instruments learning how to work with state orchestras you know 80 plus people in an orchestra and, and feeling like I could hold my space in amongst this platform of very, very skilled technicians in music. And then now in my 50s, again, I find myself transforming to suit my uh, artful needs, my, my community, but my brand mostly. 
and how to keep my brand alive after so many years in an industry and through so many transformations. And I guess the main, the main key to my success has actually been my audience. So if this relates to you and your business, uh, if you feel that the audience for whom you're communicating to are loyal to you and they, are, they see a little bit of themselves in you, then you can travel with them across an entire lifetime of industry. And I have. In fact, I've had just recently in an audience, I've, I've had um, some audience members who've been with me since they were teenagers as well and now have since become parents and have since become businessmen and, and you know, some of whom are much more, much more successful and wealthier than I am in many ways, but they are loyal to the art form and they are loyal to the, this construct that I've created as an artist. And I, I really love that. And so based on my audience and based on my successes, I suppose the thing that I've landed with recently is uh, the idea that as a brand, I have responsibilities. Um, Kate Sobrano, the human, has her own private life and I have um, my own family life and, and I parent and I'm very responsible for my daughter who's now 18 years old. But Kate Sobrano, the brand, is an entirely different universe and I treat her with an entirely different type of activity. I am, um, let's talk of me in the third person for a minute. I am, it seems, inexhaustible when it comes to creating. <laughs> I have, I don't know why, but I seem to find many different ways to cross skill. In other words, if COVID shut us down, the stages were shut down in Australia, touring opportunities were shut down in Australia, and just simply using myself, my voice, my platform to be of any value to society was shut down during COVID. Australia went into a very deep slumber for two and a half years. All of our industry, all of our CBDs went into this dire, dark place. So I had to decide how could I cross skill? How could I use whatever skill reference I have into creating some other industry which would keep me buoyant, which would keep my audience engaged, would also keep the idea that the arts and culture were essential for survival. And uh, I started to paint and I started to produce, um, funnily enough, I started to produce quilts. So I was putting all of my, my work and all of my, my love and all my lyrics and all my words into these handmade quilts because I thought, well, we'll need a reference one day to these times. What were the things that gave us comfort? And I found... I don't know about you guys, but certainly in Australia, I found that COVID gave us something in exchange. Whilst it took a lot away, it gave us a few things in exchange. And I really do respect and honour that we got something good out of it. We all gathered to the hearth again. Families came back together again. We spent more time with the people we love and we put in more concentrated time on the things that we love to do. So on um, self-preservation, we got into the kitchen. We started learning how to cook if we weren't already cooking. We started to prepare the house for more home-based um, entertainment. And I know that um, I know I just I got much better at homekeeping, in fact. And my whole legacy with the quilt, the whole idea is similar to a song. I wanted to wrap people up, keep them neat and close and together and bound together by a shared experience. And I have no, I, as an artist, I didn't want to put any value on the experience. For some, it would be traumatic. For others, it would be also very depressing. And others, it would be almost calamitous. But for other people, it could also be um, about comfort, security, and the knowledge that there is within us the power to overcome many things. Uh, I sort of seen this time as having been a little bit of a war. And honestly, the way my family and community now are bound to each other because we've survived and are surviving this war together is incredible and there's a great deal of truth to be learned out of that. But here I am now and I cut to now that I'm free and now I'm back on the road and I'm delivering keynote speeches, I'm doing concerts every week, I'm performing to people, I seem to be in a position where I can help fix what's broken and so uh, in this particular community, and I'm really glad that I'm here with you this beautiful morning, I'm watching the sun rise um, over here in Melbourne, Australia. And I am, I'm actually most physically aware that with every day 
is a new opportunity and it's an every day a new opportunity to tear down anything we thought was fixed yesterday and solid and make it new and different today and try new things examine my life and my career and all the things that I've done within it and see is there anything more from it that I can be exploited for to be of value to my community so today I've been starting on a project it's a second business of mine and I um it's been a very successful as I mentioned I I started working in the arts but um my arts have become a little bit of a second a second business nothing I've never thought that as an artist you could have a variety of different platforms for which you could get resources from you know I thought oh no you must you must be very pure stick within the, the stick within the things that you're really really good at you know this is this is your road just keep walking this road don't change don't go off into other little parts and don't get excited well actually there is a time in your life when you should be free to grow branches and to continue to grow tall and as a tree create different rings and different experiences and as you age put these rings towards your you know your whole combined experience and so I've started a business and I'm hoping that it'll actually get me over to where you are all over in America all over in Europe but it's essentially through my art I do a lot of um, home style home lifestyle um, soft furnishings prints and and plates and crockery and quilts and I mean who would have thought that out of a song an entire home could be built and that's what I'm, I'm kind of doing is my second business, which I'm very, very excited to tell you all about, only if only for the fact that it's a, a way of describing that transferable skills, you can be really disciplined and competent in an area. And that skill alone will enable you to discover other skills that you may never have known you had. Um, certainly singing, ergo, becomes the power of communicating and talking and so I've also started a platform where I've been helping a lot of seniors actually with music uh, go into um, senior residences and I go and talk with a lot of our senior community and I go back in time with them with song and I ask them to revisit the things that they were most skilled at and where the most happiest times of their lives happened. And they're usually, funnily enough, attached to either a song or a film and so I always think that songs and films are the very key that keeps us tethered to each other as a community. They are, in fact, they're like sort of like these tiny little portals back to times when you felt most strong, when you felt most emboldened, when you were most in love, like the height of every single emotion you've ever lived has probably been contained within a song. It's been contained within that, that wonderful magic that an artist can create in cinema. And, I, and I've been going out and I've been going and performing to these people. Oh, and I have so much to learn from our elders. The older community have a certain grace and a dignity that I think that we need to go and contain and bring back and see if we can't bring it towards our younger generation and give them some sense of, I don't know, hope or, or self-dignity, self-worth, self-respect. Because the only reason why I have been confident in my life and career is because my grandparents, my parents instilled in me a great sense of ownership over myself. And they said to me that you are the sole author of your own self-respect, your own self-determinism, and certainly your own thoughts. Um, and if you can harness the power of your thoughts, can you imagine what kind of worth you would be to your community and to society? And so that's what I've been up to just uh, just this week and I've discovered that there's great, great value in being able to put every week a, a small portion or a large portion of your time toward helping others just as a simple act of like this is what I do. It's what I have. It's, it's, in my, it's, it's part of my schedule. I go and promote it. I go and tell people on stage all about it. I go and write and creates short stories about it. I go and tell people what I've learnt from listening to people and observing other people in my community. And then, uh, and then you really do become someone that people like to listen to. I sat down and I gave a keynote speech to 
uh, maybe a couple of thousand young women who are singer-songwriters themselves. And they all wanted to know one question, you know, how do you write a song? And I'm certain that in business, all of you ask the same question relating to your industry. How do I be a better, um, I don't know, media, social media, a marketing, uh, a publicist, uh, a CEO? It could be very specific. But I, I wanted to tell these, these women, these, these couple of thousands of women, I want to say, how do you first start by being a better person? And if at that moment there you could have the conversation, are you the best person you can be right in this moment? And if you find yourself falling short, then write a little list, not to say, not to sort of like cave yourself in, but write a little list and say, these things, these elements about myself, if I could amend or improve or tweak the volume up and be more courageous, have more courage, be brave and be more sturdy and more self-respectful, um, then when you employ that to your industry, I guarantee magic will happen. We sat in this community and we started writing songs and the first thing I asked them to do was to write about something that was true for them. I wanted authenticity. I wanted them not to make it up. I didn't want them to just build some construct and just simply make an incredibly unique lie. I said, tell me something about yourself that's true. And like in the great words of Dolly Parton, who's one of the greatest singer-songwriters in the world, in my opinion, she said, when you hit the truth within yourself, you set others free. She said, I love the way Dolly Parton talks about singer songwriters too. She said, and then when you write a song, you've got to make sure that you've got to make people cry. <laughs> and I do think you do. You have to make people feel things. You have to make them feel when they're experiencing the song, the way you felt when you were writing the song. You want to invite them into your feelings and expose the vulnerability within you and allow them to feel vulnerable and yet know that they are safe because someone else in the world totally understands how they feel and has given them the idea that this is a community we live in who have all similar injuries, we all have all similar emotions and we all need comfort. And though we might be strong CEOs and we might build our own, you know, empires, at the end of the day, we all still really need company not one single person alone can do it on their own. We need to know that we are part of a sea of humanity doing this. And so 2,000 people, we had us all writing these songs. And do you know what I discovered, which was the most powerful thing of all amongst just 2,000 people? It could have been a sea of 20,000 people and the same thing would have happened, is that not one single person had anything in common, really, when it came to their own empire of thoughts their own thoughts their most golden pure thoughts uh, were completely unique and original to them and when each of them discovered that they had these thoughts and they were able to share them with another and then provoke an emotional impact on another person the power in the room was palpable. I mean, we had, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. We had like, you know, just the artist, one artist would get up and they would just sing to us one small message. Um, here's an example. I wrote a song called Courage. And the opening stanza, I said, sometimes I drown in my own moods. If I feel wronged or just confused, you never desert me. And if I make the wrong impression, if I've mistaken your intention, you know I didn't mean to. And this opening stanza itself was so true for me because sometimes in error I have been explosive and I've been powerful and I've overwhelmed people I've loved and I've been so remorseful and afterwards I've gone, oh, if I could just, just, just go back in time and make all of that go away, that would just, it would just heal, heal everything. Uh, and so I wrote it in that time. And so in, in a sense, I kind of wrapped up that moment in time and allowed it to just to just to evaporate. And in the audience, oh, the amount of people that all just sort of had this, it was like we went to the, the church of the song, you know, they all went, oh, I, I am, I am, I here I am. And, and it was just like this huge release for everyone. 
And so, I mean, I think in a sense that if you in your field have the power to be able to lead people, then you also need to find people first and you need to listen to them. You need to look at them. You need to observe them and study them well and understand your audience well and love them well, love them despite every invitation to do otherwise understand what makes your audience your audience strengthen that support them show them that you understand and you've heard them uh it's been one of my most successful things in my life was to always have uh, I suppose a very strong and keen interest in people I have also it seems an enormous heart which is easily broken but as I've discovered it can be broken many times over and it can be put back together as well and so I'd like to think that I'm also uh, learning through the four plus decades of being on this earth that I'm also kind of fearless as well and if you uh, I think if you're protected in the knowledge that what you have to offer is of value and it's authentic it comes from your heart and it's something that you put your entire uh, investment as a, as a human into I just don't think that you can do wrong I just don't think you can go wrong Anyway, I'd like you all to um, visit my Instagram account if you want and just check me out because I ask you this because I want you to see the many different ways that one artist can uh, operate, which, and I think we are all artists in a sense because for every industry that we represent, whether it's um, food, it's music, it's entertainment, hospitality, or it's Silicon Valley. Each of us are artists in our own right. We are nimble. We, we turn and dance and make sudden choices. We change our minds. We, we reflect on who we've been and then we transform ourselves out of who we've been into someone who we'd rather be. And if I look at my Instagram account, I see the many different faces, but the very thing that seems to me, even if I was going to try to change it, I can't. The thing that seems to be amplified about me is my very strong interest in my life and community around me. I use these platforms, but I reveal a lot about myself and I offer these parts of myself in an effort to ask other people to do the same thing of themselves. I think we spend an awful lot of time on these machines, which we have to, but if we could be using these machines like today, all these electronic machines to discover each other, to find each other, across these waves, then I think that in half, we've sort of halfway, we've kind of made um, an even bigger pool of humanity, which is amazing. We only, I only ever want to use the tools for that sake. And though sometimes I have to use it for marketing, you'll discover that I always try to work how my marketing um, is expressing some part of my, my basic purpose. I mentor a lot of artists. In my band, for instance, I have four artists for whom I've seen from teenage them and have them watch them grown and up and through into their mid twenties. And I've watched their, their evolution. I've, I've assisted them. I've been there anytime they've had questions about how they wanted to um, advance themselves in the recording industry and, and how they saw themselves as humans and, and as women and growing up in the public eye. And you'll see all the stories about them. I post lots of stories about my friends and their successes. I don't just kind of keep it all to myself in this tidy bundle. Um, and, I, and I try to, I guess I try to show that you can use tools to be very, very intimate with people, these tools that we have, phones, you know, iPads, um, give them small glimpses of your private life, but only as only within the, the level that's appropriate to being able to have your privacy. And, and lastly, and this is, I don't know what you all do specifically and independently in your careers, but um, the corporate life that I, that I do, I see as a service, it's a public service. And I perform for many large corporations and I, in a sense, uh, Maybe I'm offered up as the gift that they get for having, you know, worked hard in a year. Maybe I'll go and do a lot of the Christmas concerts or I will be doing Mother's Day concerts or things. I'm like that, that item that someone can't really buy, but they go and offer to their 20 of their, their highest selling clients. Or I'm not quite sure sometimes who the client is particularly, but I don't ever, I, do nev I never, ever judge 
what community I'm going into. I just know what my job is when I'm there. And so I, I sort of keep this equanimity and, and I just sing and I'm, I'm sort of like the pudding at the end of the menu. I don't know if you have <laughs> someone once mentioned I'm like a warm chocolate tart. <laughs> and I think on that note, <laughs> I've probably come to the end of my little speech book. I think mostly about my life. It's, it's my life in a nutshell and it all ends up to being a wonderful warm chocolate tart. I hope this has been of interest to you. I hope that my life has been of interest to, and, and maybe it's for those of you out there who have never actually heard or known who I am. My name is Kate Sobrano. You can find me on Spotify and you can find me all over the Instagram and the Facebook and everywhere you need to find me. Um, but if there were any questions you have, you should put them through to Booker and I'm sure he'll forward them to me. Hey, yeah. Uh, hi, darling. Hey, absolutely fantastic, Kate. Love it. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. I hope I covered all the things you needed me or wanted me to cover in order to oh, you did. these lovely absolutely. people. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I do have a few questions for Lee later in the week. I yeah. want to talk to him about some stuff we want to do in Australia. So I'll, oh, okay. I'll send him an email. But, but, uh, but we, we really love that. And uh, um, That's great. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. I've got I've got some bounce back coming. That's why I'm just sitting here, Kate. I'm trying to oh, let that clear I'm, up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's well, okay. Listen, not, everybody, it's not for you. I got, did you I got notice four different machines going here? I'd, I'd like to love and leave you, but notice that the sun has just come out. You probably noticed. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I've <that>. been here. <laughs> it was <laughs> dawn just a second ago, and now the sun is shining. <laughs> Have a great night. Hey, you too. Fantastic. See ya. Okay, see ya. Okay. Okay, uh, all, all I can say is wow. And, and uh, that was, that, that this is, has been a day of, uh, of, of, of women that uh, just blew me away. Uh, so many absolutely fantastic stories. Um, so, so at the end of this, I just want to say thank you to everyone and uh, let you know that uh, next year, the World of Women 23, 2023, is, is back at the uh, Sheraton uh, brand here in Tampa, Florida. And uh, we'll definitely be uh, looking forward to uh, some some live uh, presentations next year but uh this was a fantastic day for me i really appreciate everyone's participation and uh we're signing off thanks everyone